his net worth was good, but it took him a long time to get a Shadow Blade, and when he did get it, there was already sentries kind of everywhere, so it felt a little rough to me. Links against Chen, always being one of the kind of traditional counters to the hero, since you have three easy access creeps to Death Pack, but new Death Pack's kind of different. It has much longer duration, longer cooldown, so it still has... It's still similar in terms of overall uptime, but you don't have to spam it as much and have this like constant like, oh, wait a second, guys, I gotta go grab a creep, then I'll come back. It's like, you grab a creep, and then you're good to fight for a longer time. So it, because of that, he's not really as much of a direct counter to Chen. There's not always uh, little snacks there all the time, but, yes. but he's still, still very good at killing Chen, and True. he can pick off other heroes. Um, I don't know if he'll go an Orchid build or more of a Deso, perhaps, yeah. but I guess a Pugna feels a little bit of an unfortunate pick, but it does give him Tower Hitter. Uh, the, is one good thing. The build I've been seeing uh, is typically defusal first, and then okay. you go wherever. I mean, you're a carry, you kind of adapt your build based on what your opposing, opposing team is and how the game's going. I've, I've seen a lot of Maelstroms, but it, I yep. think it's always peels is the reason why. Um, it, it seems like it's always games that peels are in. But grab yep. that. A couple of Monkey King bars. Builds all, builds all over the place. Yeah. Imagine you almost have... We'll definitely see a BKB at some point. Not the first item, but... Come out. Deso was kind of the classic go-to item for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. But this is a hero definitely coming into the group stage I uh, know a lot of people talking about, seeing it in pubs all, the, all over the place, and felt like bad. teams were going to definitely be playing some clinks. Now that's a pick that I uh, wasn't necessarily expecting. Oh, that's a throwback really for Jarek, so. It's true. Uh, it's not really the most popular hero right now, but in terms of chasing and gap close, he's really effective. If you're chasing a Bloodseeker down, shards him off, uh, sh uh, snowballs chase him. Even like punch and stuff is pretty well, effective. And Klinks is similar to Bloodseeker in that he is very mobile. Hot. You need lockdown against this hero. And seconds remaining. That's good against Klinks for the same reason. And, and you can also save Five people a lot in this game, actually. Remaining. Like, Nyx goes on a guy, Snowball save him. Klinks Orchid's a guy, Snowball save him. There's a big Bloodseeker blood right, pull everybody in, wait till it explodes, and then jump out. So there's... Uh, defensively, Tusk can be really effective this game, if played correctly. Yeah. I like the hero a lot. Gives them a way to kind of secure their lanes a bit. Use that eye shots, block to kind of uh, pull the offlane lane a bit back and could see, you know, OG run Pugna in any either mid or offlane. Tiny can go safe lane or mid. Seems that Liquid are expecting it mid with the troll ban, one of Anna's heroes that he played quite a bit of back in the day. Uh, who played troll a lot? Anna? At least here there. I mean, okay. I, I remember they because, won Kiev of, with it, yeah, guess, because yeah. of winning Kiev. Like, it, it wasn't a signature, that's, that's for sure. Yeah, though, I remember that pick was a bit, no, um, no. a bit, uh, Undone at the time. I think you're right. It's not really an anti hero. It's just he had that one iconic. Yeah, you win a win a million dollars. Yeah, I think we're gonna we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll give him the iconic <laughs> for it. That's, that's a fair response. Hmm. Especially in a draft that though that seemed kind of hard for them to win. Good tournament. Um, this tournament's good too though. Uh, and OG's last pick is going to be a Morphling. So, um, range cores against Clinks is oftentimes a little dangerous. Um, so I'm not completely sold. But he can also become Clinks himself and then be a better version yeah. of Clinks as Morphling. Um, so that's kind of cool. Played this earlier today. Uh, some of the other casts were telling me he got that, you know, allied morph ability with like an invoker and some other heroes on his team. Like an Earthshaker. Earthshaker totem, yeah. Totem, yeah. I don't know how it works with tiny tree grab. Can you grab a tree and then morph back? Yes, what, what happens? You get the bonus damage, yeah. Sick. Seconds, Sounds great. I want to I yeah. see some of that. Avatar, snowballs. I mean, stealing strafe is broken in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like, it's, it's all ranged attacks, um, all projectiles, basically. Mm -hmm. Anything Clinks throws at you, you're going to dodge. Um, um, and that's just so good to have on a 15 second cooldown. Great ability. Also, uh, for the viewers out there wondering, you know, what's going on? There's a lot of games going on. Both these teams had a draw earlier today. So OG, probably one of the rougher day one schedules, had to verse LGD and now Liquid. Yeah, that's, that's... why I didn't, I didn't put them on my fantasy. <laughs> just like, no way. There's, uh, these games are really yeah. hard. Really hard matchups. they got a draw. If they can, oh, no, I mean, they're down 1 0, but if they can walk away with the draw here, that's a, a great day one. A couple Absolutely. of draws against the two. Best teams on paper in your group. Yeah, two of the three best. As for Liquid, the they also got a draw. They drew uh, surprisingly against Fnatic. Almost lost both games, actually. So, um, in a group stage where everyone's getting these draws and very even, you know, you need to start getting some wins if you want to try and secure that upper bracket. It's been very few 2 0s, but I'm sure that as the meta is kind of all flooding together right now, that there will be a lot of unexpected mm -hmm. upsets where people are just slightly off on things. Um, and especially as, like, first day a group stage is done and coaches start coming in saying, like, this is what's been really good today. I think that's where things really change a lot. So day one is always a little bit sloppy in the first place. It's going to be core Kunkka. What, what are we looking at? Kuro's picked up Clinks. There's going to be some swaps. Or... Oh, is this some uh, some EG troll right here? Yeah, they they saw yeah they saw EG. 
They're like, Kuro's like, fly, bro. You wouldn't play clinks. Watch me do it. I mean, it, it's not unco it's not uncommon for Liquid oh. to do something like this, where Miracle's like, I feel like playing support yeah. this. You know, the second I saw the Kunkka, I'm like, Kunkka Nick support duo. That sounds bad. And I almost feel like the Kunkka is Miracle's hero. I've, he's been playing it in pubs quite a bit. Is Clink's no a support of things? Sure. I mean, you could no. zone a hero with Syrian no arrows, but uh, that hero cannot play as a support. I refuse to believe that purge until I see. It. What if you buy? I have no I, idea how you transition. Lane, like Lane and Sage, you can do support things, zone heroes, stuff like that, yeah. totally. But yeah, once you hit like mid game, there's. I was just expecting Kuro to pick up the Prophet and play that five position. Is that what Matu's doing? It may be. Who knows what we're in for? These teams are, you know, basically saying, you know, this group stage, yeah, let's let's try some new stuff. So did they? So. Did you fully understand that what happened with EG? My understanding was that it was like you're not allowed to swap players or heroes multiple times. Yeah, and the fact that the manager was saying, you know, they weren't allowed to swap seats means they did not intend those players to be playing those yes. heroes. Because otherwise it's not an issue. It's just like, well, why are they swapping seats? They, you know, Fly was intended to play Klings. So this is either like a, a repeat example. Uh, no, no it, way. It did swap, okay. Uh, Crow is playing... Uh, no, that's well. not Kuro. That's Mir Miracle is... Con that's Mir Miracle, he... Tags himself as Kuro IR. Kuro IR. I, I don't know why. Well, let's let's take a look. Another mistake, or uh, yeah, that's a Kuro Clinks, guys. Uh, yeah. He is playing core. Uh, maybe the uh, the EG special now a common thing. Uh, swapping your swapping your cores, but Miracle's going mid. So who's playing support? Uh, is it Matu on the Matu's Prophet? Matu's playing support Prophet. Yeah. Okay, you know, this actually makes a little bit more sense, because it's, it's a hero that's a support or whatever, but uh, but he can transition absolutely. So maybe that's the thought. Matumba is like maybe their second best nature's prophet, <laughs> um, yeah. and therefore put him on that, and then like Kuro transition. Like they're yeah. So people kind of went crazy with the whole EG happening. This yeah, I would say this is still crazy, but nowhere near the same level because this is Kuro, a guy who has played carry. He actually played a DPC event as carry when Miracle was just taking a break. So Kuro playing carry is not like the most bonkers thing ever. Like. Fly doing that is like Fly doesn't even play carry and pumps. So does this mean GH is gonna have actually zero items this game? Because um, he's gonna be he's gonna be buying the wards, right? The pan I mean, Matu's a profit. That's a hero that can get some good wards down. I'm gonna go TP and deep. Does Mat Matu buy wards though? We'll he see. may. He's he's played, he's a big profit player though. I've back when profit was a safe laner, he was one of the players who was running it more than most. Yeah, that's true. Um, and perhaps it's a comfort thing. Kuro's like. You know, I can play a Klinks. It's simple, one-dimensional. You right-click heroes, single target, no skill needed. Matu, man, that hero is too much micro. You play. So Liquid's going to grab three bounty runes. One of the benefits is the, the transfer. It's very hard to contest that with, while winning a trade. So they're just going to have to take the loss and uh, head to the lane, see if they can make something out of it. Uh, the Tusk-Pugna dual lane, very good at gap closing. Uh, definitely have the kill potential on Nature's Profit. they got to worry about the trance, though. And then in the mid lane, it's going to be a Kunkka versus... A Morphling. So OG didn't perhaps send Tiny mid how we may have expected. Uh, and it's going to be not Anna on Morphling, but Topson this time around. Yeah. A little different here. Yep. Switching Tweaks up. all over the place. I mean, he's blowing Kunk up in the mid lane. That's a whole well, style of already gone. Kunkka did make him miss every single last hit as well, though, at the same time. So uh, we'll see if Kunkka could do any better under his tower. Gets one with a deny. Gets a second as well. So Miracle will salve and Tango, but at least has a... Slight CS advantage. Interesting lane so far. Uh, Buck on the top lane, it's a Bloodseeker plus Nyx Assassin up against a Chen and a Tiny. And he does end up going for the Penitence, just trying to brass Bloodseeker. I think that makes more sense, because Bloodseeker is one of those heroes that, if he gets off to a really good start, he kind of gets out of control. So, yep. I mean, focus on zoning him as much as you can. I like what Jerex is doing, you know, this... Five position profit with Blightstone and Treants, you can't really lane against him, so you're gonna pull waves. Taking a lot of damage. Good body block so far. They may actually kill Seb here if he's yeah. not careful. Okay. Very high damage. Yeah. Right. Often you see Clinks go to lane with a Blightstone this time around, you know, his buddy's got one, which means he can get a couple more slippers, double slippers, and He's feeling pretty good about himself. Man, this profit support thing just gave them this this weird laning advantage where the, they just can't deal with the trees very well. It's gonna be a while until they can. They might be able to catch Crow though. Snowball coming in, lands a disable, but not able to bring Seb with him a little bit too far away. So he could have still gone invis, I guess. But I forcing this don't know if he wants. Nice. He doesn't want a level skeleton wolf. Absolutely. A lot of these clinks we're seeing going like two two zero build. 
He's using the strafe as a, as a defensive tool. So now you're able to get advantage there. Yep. Jerex is trying to outlast hit the pull in the meantime. Uh, mid lane, it's 9 and 1 versus 7 and 3 Morphling, so pretty even. Yep. Morph is about to get a wave under his tower, so it's actually is even. It's Topsin. It's got Miracle fairly low, but as it, vice versa, Miracle has Topsin low. And that's great with, for the Bloodseeker. This low HP here mid is giving him some extra damage and movement speed. Gonna be bottom though, where Mantu Perfect. does get brought down. Didn't catch that one. They got a big kill. Um, Clarity Potion pop for Jerex as well, so this barely costs them in the slightest. Nice opening for them. He's one of those early kills, and I think at the same time, doesn't really hurt Machu that much. He's a five position. He's going to just TP right back in. Let's clean up the phase boots. He knows he wants to be a core. <laughs> yeah. He's playing one. He's just he's, he's not there yet. That's all. This Dota now. You just don't have supports in your team. Yeah, Topsa might be in trouble mid here. He's going to take some damage. They'll start the morph. Fairy fire as well. Miracle. Punishing the fact that he even gets greedy going for a couple extra last hits here as Morphling gets his bottle up but doesn't have that full agi efficiency to use these bottle charges. You often want to have. Yeah, He's going agi now. He's like, there's a rune down here and he won't get it though because the treats will deny it. Then Caught it. <laughs> nice. Just kidding. No. Way off. Uh, skeleton walk. Good. Good ability sometimes. Do they have dust? Nope. Uh -huh. uh, and that one was just an ice shard too. That must have been a pretty big mistake by Kuro. Maybe one of those things that doesn't happen um, if you play Core Morph then. Blood right following the Impale. We'll silence up Anna, but here's a Centaur Conqueror with a stun. He needs to find a hero to use it on. We'll hit Mind Control, but I'm not sure they've got the damage here with the tree grab wearing out. Anna he picks up level four, gets though. a single point in the toss here, but he still needs to find Mind Control, who pretty damn fast and chewing his way in the trees for a TP. Anna has an avalanche. Guess it's wrong, though. Even using a scan there, but realize his folly Strong shortly after. Lane. It's gonna be very close. Blast will kill him at least, so they'll trade here. But better for the for Team Liquid on the Radiant side here. Yep. Radiant's bottom. A lot of fighting on going on uh, so far. Using scenario, you're pretty happy about as a Bloodseeker, but only one point in the thirst. You could see even when a couple like there was a hero mid on 10% health, he actually didn't have that much damage or movement speed. Yeah, the, the nerf really making a big difference yeah. recently. 7% level 1, it used to be like 16. They're gonna chase Tiny a little bit, but almost no way to follow up here. Much of anything else. Uh, once again, Tomo Man's been doing a great job checking runes. Finds a haste here. Hard kill to snag though. This might do it. There's the stun. Nope, nope not enough damage. Here comes Prophet though, may not expect this one. Tops has gone full agi and Matu punishes it! You know, he's a more player himself, he knows what Morph wants to do there and punishes his greed. Will likely bring down Jerex as well, he's getting the sigil before he even kills off Jerex, an extra bit of gold going his way. Nicely played by Matu. Oh, that might be able to be a miracle though, he's got a stun, uh, 9 seconds until the X sets. Blocking has yeah. been pretty effective, and yeah. Some great body blocks. His morph comes in one of the last hit, I believe, but couldn't quite get there in time for it, although he did get the XP in top lane. Yeah, I'm getting a combo a kill. kill. So, yeah. And he was blood rage on Tiny as well. I don't know if uh, he's expecting to pick up uh, a kill there, or just trying to help his, his opponent a little bit, but... Well, nice thing about the Chen, you send him back, and then he immediately TPs back to lane, because No-Tail's in trouble up top, but Tiny and is showing up. Is in a bit of a awkward position because he's alone against three heroes, so he doesn't actually have a way to get any kills out of this. I mean, at least they did lower the HP of Prophet, though. So he's he's going to be semi-zoned here. Can't yeah. TP back, so a rare time where he feels like he doesn't get efficiency on the map. But either way, getting the kills is making all the difference here. Kuro right. kind of zoned from lane at this point. 19 last hits on him. Um, at the very least, he's going to have to use a shrine, but definitely having some trouble. And Pugna's really paying for itself here in the offlane. So last game, even against some counters, Pugna had a very good time and pushed towers early with the, the team, so... Ojerx picks up a DD in the mid lane. This could be dangerous here for Miracle. Yeah, Morphling's rotating in. And it's got a salve and bottle charges, but yeah, as you said, Miracle should be able to use the Ghost if it needed. The stolen form here, Thompson. Oh, what a snowball dodge! Dodges the Ghost Ship, and now Thompson with the stolen Kunkka form is going to X back Miracle. Making sure they can kill him off here. Rotating in his Seb to help make sure they can get the kill on GH. Does get a Carapace out. It looks like GH should go down. Decrypt and a blast. Seb will get the last hit. As there was also some action up top. Chen and Nyx trading. No, Chen and Bloodseeker trading their lives. Not bad for them. Uh, and it does lose a lot of HP in this trade though. Yeah, he needs to send back. Low. 
Ancient Prophet's doing so much damage right now. He should be able to catch up. Yeah, to one more hit. I think that's it. He's got a magic stick, though. Oh, it's going to be close. He gets it just barely away in the shrine. Yeah, and he get out of this one? Yes. Oh, Mana's going to turn around. He Quelling Blades out of the Sprout, and Nana wants to bring down Matu. That's where Kuro goes down again, not having the, the best of times here. Anna, uh oh. Around two. <laughs> Such a topsy turvy laning stage as he gets silenced, and this time there's no shrine to fall back from. He's like, Where's my chat? I need a send back and no tail. Okay, it's gonna buy some time though. Oh, mind control, does he chase for this one? Doesn't look like he can, and no tail, he's can't TP out in time. Oh, the troll? The troll creep! He gets him! <laughs> oh, no tail is actually only with Mike right now. That was pretty sick. A uh, buyback from Atoma Man. Oh, he Where's he going? He wants to get the kill. On Tiny. He killed the Tiny with his uh, oh, ultimate. Oh, with his ultimate, okay. He bought okay. back ulties and kills Tiny. That's 400 Since, uh, gold. Wow. Blood, Bloodseeker gave the vision. He, he's able to do that. Uh, okay. Makes sense. That's nice, worth nice it. Nice grab. Yep. Lost like, yeah. 300, got 400. Definitely worth it. Definitely so a very odd game so far, I feel. Yeah, yeah I was going to say the same thing. It's hard to, re uh, to read like, uh, who's who's winning right now? I'm, I'm really not sure. Rupture up top, and uh, needs to get out of this blood right. Will do so, but by doing so, he also takes quite a bit of rupture damage. Seb shows up to stop the TP out, and that's a dieback in a sense. 30 seconds down, not a lot normally, but this is just eight minutes in for a five position support. No tell finding GH here on the bot lane, trying to gank on Clinks, but gonna go maybe the other way around. Kuro looking to grab Chen. A couple attacks. One net, two net. Here comes Tusk as well. They block him in. Doesn't have six yet on Tusk, so it's gonna be hard to get the kill, but. Great stun. Curl still wants to play around this. Yep. His uh, death pact is actually worn off. He's lost that bonus health, so. They just don't do damage, though. Yeah, let's say these two supports and Nature's Prophet, he does do damage. He drops an ultimate to bring him down as Chen drops and he's looking for Jerex as well. Does have a snowball. Get to a creep wave here, but unfortunately, can't really TP out with GH hunting him down with the Impale. That was a hard one. The Impale, does he now go he TP? TP? Okay, yeah. that was the wrong. I'm, I'm surprised he TP first on there. I don't know either, but... Kuro's gonna find no tail here. You know, decided that, that kill's not gonna be worth it. Okay. Tail needs to juke around these trees, gets a decrap, so he actually doesn't. And... Look, how is he blocking so well? This is insane. It's like running for his life, and right as the TP comes in, he's already blocking with the, the Alpha Wolf. No tail is so on top of this so far. Seb under the tree though, he might get dove. Nyx Assassin coming from the side looking for the stun and Kuro wanting to dive as well. But Seb is still covering himself in the back corner. He's gonna get sent back by the Chen. It's gonna cost no tails life probably, but Seb should get back in time. Oh, that really? was so close. Great observer or two put on the high ground to give them some extra vision here. Bananas rotated in. They're gonna see everything in this tree area on the side of Liquid, but unfortunately, they're gonna see there's just a few too many heroes here for them to deal with. Thompson turning into a Nyx Assassin for an Impale Steal. As Liquid will retreat, at least grabbing some bounty runes on the retreat. Getting them three out of four. Miracle level eight on the mid lane. Um, I think uh, uh, this is just the like, same thing as last game, just constant fighting and ganking. Yeah. We, yeah, there was a kill at top while all that was going on as well, I believe. Yeah, it they was... killed the uh, Bloodseeker. Jarek's yes. got the last hit. I, I don't know how that happened. Maybe he had backup from somebody. Maybe like um, Pugna helped him get the kill before he TP'd originally or something. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, one of the heroes you TP would have had to have been there for it. Mid lane, Miracle, looking for the Chen. He's gonna pay for this one for sure. Yeah. As the ghost ship with the Nature's Prophet Ultimate is... Does Topson have a way to kind of respond? Has the purge from the Sadio, but uh, Miracle's just a bit too tanky because of this ghost ship. The Coco Drum will be wearing off soon, which means I think Topson knows he can keep on chasing for this kill, and Miracle is about to start taking some damage. Pushes him back with the Sun, the Life Drum official, and Topson just in time starts morphing back to straight, gets impaled though. And has overcommitted a bit too much for this kill, and Seb may be feeling the same thing as well. Nyx Assassin hunting him, no carapace means Seb is okay for now. Trying to just juke and jive his way out of this one. GH with the blocks, gets the vendetta hit, and that'll be a kill here. And is now showing up. This constant aggression coming out from both sides. No player resorting to farming here. Jarek shows up now with a dust as well. He wants to bring down Kuro. He's still got a decent chunk of health thanks to the death pack. Sing on about 400 as... He's got Avalanche. Av Anna will be able to hit this Avalanche. With a tree toss as well. Gets the last hit and this time it's Anna. He's now overcommitted. Both sides getting kills, but anytime they do, just getting punished for it. You get a kill, you die. That hero who kills you, they also die. 
Who's actually farming and hitting creeps? I don't know. Spent 30 kills at 12 minutes. This is insane. Right. They're, they're definitely, they gotta hit the record here, surely. Hit the, hit the max kills per game uh, I, a challenge. I, I bet way lower. I was like, oh, there's max 90 kills or something in a game, but I, I think they're gonna break it this one. So, uh, you know, the little playstyle, the CIS Dota, I feel like it's kind of spreading, you know? They're, they're growing and have reached over to Europe and said, you guys, you, you can start playing a bit like us as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really fun to watch. The only player that's really not getting into it is Mind Control, who's just been kind of sitting in his lane hitting creeps. Like, thanks for the damage, guys. Same. Yep. Killing creeps more more rapidly here. Uh, kind of interesting to see the uh, build differences. Seb going for a uh, Aether Lens this game. Um, mm -hmm. Last game he was like, what was it? Uh, Tranquils into Force Staff. This game wants some more cast range. Kind of cool. Um, almost picks up level 10. That'll be really important. A health talent for him. That could help him stay alive in some of these fights. Um, no tail hitting six could be really impactful as well. But so far, his, his creep micro has been fantastic. Any big items for the radiant team though? Um, um the Deso of Clinks is 1300 away. Bloodseekers on 1200, so might see. I imagine a blade mail first. In yeah. a game like this. I'd like to see mind control start using all those thirst stacks to actually come to a few fights. But he's alone kind of once again, and as a result, he's getting gone on. And it should be the end of him as... <laughs> Tusk really wanted the last hit there, waiting <laughs> waiting for the moment. Man, it seems like a really bad game to have Bloodseeker, though. Like, Tiny seems like kind of the solution. He's got so much HP that pure damage doesn't even matter. It's like, go ahead, rupture me, man. I, I really don't care. Even the Pugno, which the Bloodseeker is now being picked twice against, doesn't feel... Like, he suffers too much. If he doesn't get silence, he's actually got, similarly, a lot of burst. It could just be laning stage stuff, though. Like, they're they're just doing a really good job there. That, so that's what's giving them the openings, but... Getting a catch on Morphling here. He's trying to collapse on Miracle, but Miracle using the invis to get out. It's gonna be GH, I believe. A long duration stun from Thompson, followed up by an impale. Great Morphling plays from him. Could be in some trouble now. It may get silence off this thing. He's gonna get a carapace on the on the blood ride, but he's still silenced, and that means he can't go back to Morphling for one more second. Can oh. he get out? He barely escapes! He was so close to dying there. Thompson out of mana can't stun anyone. Looks like he's looking for that big duration stun, and he gets it on Miracle now with the bottle charges. That was so wow. close, man. That Prophet right click was like halfway to his head. Especially when the silence ended, and there was like another silence right after it or something like that. That was insane. Very, very close to, to oh. getting picked off there. Mind control getting a bit too greedy with that blood right reveals his position and it's Jerex. Out of mana though. Hunting him down. Hugna though, he's got plenty of mana to play around with, but that Aether Lens will easily bring down the Bloodseeker and he's not done. Set once more, he gets the Decrypt Blast on the Prophet. Chasing for a bit of more, but realizes he's got to back off. And it's actually GH, okay. Set. Too far, once again, we've seen this story play out a few times here. You die for a kill, you get punished, and in come Liquid, but... Oh, well, by the time he's getting sent back, yeah. he's gone. He's, he's out of there, and instead, maybe it's Sherex. This time there's no sent back, the treat surround is good for Matu. Helping make sure they get that kill, but... <laughs> Not overdone, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, there's never an end to the action, Kevin. <laughs> he keeps on going, here comes Miracle, swooping in with the boat, cleaves through to get another as Topson pushes him back once again using these long duration strength stuns, going from strength to agility, constantly flexing his stats and playing this Morphling to its full potential with all point, the though. utility. Okay, by the time gets the ward down, more damage. Seb has a life drain up. If he can find a good target for it, it might be Macho on the low ground, but Thompson's been ruptured. Immediate TP, but there's an X to pull him back in. I don't think Thompson can get out too easily from this one. Seb has a life drain. He's going aggressive, wants to bring down Macho. Doesn't quite get the kill, though. That's so as Macho, oh, with that TP on the, on the nether ward, didn't quite do enough damage. It got down to about 20 health there. Let's make spectating really easy. The fights are always in the same spot and they just never end. So I just kind of like uh, move a little bit to the left. Post laning right. stage. The laning stage was like three kills in three different lanes. Yeah, that's that's actually true. Very, very busy. Crazy but, close uh, fights constantly. Yeah, this is same kind of story as game one in a lot of ways. For those, those of you who missed it, just this active, constant fighting. A lot of kills going back and forth. Neither team pulling very far ahead. I mean, we got another 10 kills in, in actually like five minutes is what just happened. Yep. Or four minutes. It's crazy. I don't mean, it just gets harassed by a vendetta there. It was a ward planted by the Prophet, but his TP got scouted, so that'll be dewarded very quickly, I can only really imagine. Matu, though, Dire Vision, it's, it's kind of in unexpected places. These two Dire Wards up top are very defensive. Yeah. But 
I mean, a situation like that, it pays off. It scouts out the Radiant Ward, they immediately de ward and kill, they kill the Prophet, so why not? I mean, and their their lineup is more defensive, they're against the Clinks, so I think it makes a lot of sense. This game's paying off. Yeah, and it's these, it's against the Clinks, you put these sentries with the Observer Wards. Both Observer Wards are accompanied by the sentries, so you scout that Clinks anytime he's moving around in that skeleton walk. How's our support uh, Prophet doing? Oh. He is buying some wards and sentries. He's oh, very close. Kuro's been scattered out here. Market. Farming some Ancients. He's going to get dusted up and caught by a Snowball Stun. Bloodrite going to catch a lot of these heroes if they try and commit for this Kuro kill. He gets the strike. Can he heal up in time? The Yule Scepter are going to throw him up in the air as Pugna gets brought down first and Miracle here to help bail out Kuro who was in a good enough position to not get caught by that smoke gank. Jerx is very close to getting X here, but likely, luckily is able to stay away. The the Tranquil Yules, very fast hero. I, I feel like they miss XQ a bit there. The decrep actually hurt them. I think they needed to see a uh, a walrus yeah. punch a little earlier. He was able to get under the shrine. Mid things hard. I would say even miss XQ. They shouldn't have chased that far to begin with. When that smoke pops and they don't get the immediate ice shard block or uh, snowball or Yules. You're diving really far and giving Liquid a chance to like just bring everyone to re react. And is starting to get in the game though. So uh, Shadow Blades up, so looking for yep. easy kills if he can find them. He's he's been one of the more active players already so far. A lot of these kills have had his name on it. Quite to the same extent as the Pugna. Fifteen of these twenty-one kills Seb has been there for. There's a lot of numbers on the board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. The only person that doesn't have great stats is uh, Morphling, basically, but you know, his uh, net worth is actually not great either. Having a little trouble, picks up a Dragon Lance first. Um, he's actually seeing very strength morph this game, Every, surprisingly. He's going strength for the, like, stun initiation. Then, I mean, if you click him now, it's just like, he goes from full strength to full agi in, like, no time at all. And, uh... Very dead hero. Yeah. Ran into a, a tough situation there with the Rupture. Shadow Blade. Not quite working how he intended. Jerex will get out of the blood right here as here comes Thompson from behind. Coming on in with the Morphling. Turns into the Nyx Assassin. Carapace is there and a snowball save as well. Nice defensive play is coming out from OG. Thompson going to turn and fight once. Mind control. Can he get the kill? He needs one more right click. It's going to come. As no tail gets the kill for him. On the backside, Klinks was trying to bring down Seb, but instead he gets Dukrep the blast. Not going to land, luckily. Well, that would have got him very, very low. The Shrine coming out as well. Jerex gets the ice shots off just before he dies. Sebi decreps, he dodges Kuro. And now the live drain makes us bring down the clicks. Oh, He's alive, 5 HP. Thompson, though, with the creeps. It's actually Chen. No tail with a triple kill from the grave. He's finding all these kills. His entire creep army, it's on a, it's on a sliver of health. It's going to get out of there. No tail bails it out. Says, come hither, my creeps. You've done well. You've got me three kills. I mean, he's getting so much work done. He's got 12% movement speed. He's got regen. He's got attack speed aura and a catapult. And even if he goes down, he's just making so much happen. And Pugna, 3.8k damage in that fight. He was definitely the problem factor that Liquid don't seem to have an answer for. And that was with a Nyx counterpick. This Bloodseeker with his silence. You know, they theoretically draft around Pugna when it's first pick. But even so... Seb is just kiting them around, using this de decrep so incredibly well. Yeah, he is making all the fights hard. And for now, OG will sit defensively, uh, spend a little time farming, get the lanes pushed out. I, I think the, the scariest thing in all these long fights is that if there's a Prophet hitting your base at the same time as these fights go on for 20 minutes or however long it's been, um, he's just going to take your building. So they've got to be careful. Make sure that the lanes are pushed out as the game elongates towards the ultra late game where they should have better heroes. Morphling is going to do great late game. Tiny should do well. Pugna should do well. I mean, maybe Clinks and Bloodseeker are a bit yeah. scary. Konka certainly is, but I think Jerex has been doing a great job mitigating what Miracle can do. Yeah. So much so that he built a Heaven's Halberd first. That was his first pickup here. Dark Keeping himself alive. Will these two teams go next? I've got to imagine it's directly at each other's throats. Smoke up from OG. They are playing around this middle lane. Perhaps knowing that if they can win a fight, they can secure Roche. And if they don't see anyone, Radiance they may secure Roche. They are attack. in the pit. Full Agi Morphling and Liquid. Well, they're ganking Anna. Unfortunately for the Australian, he's had a bit of a rough game one and game two, not quite where game one was, but he's now died twice in a row. His immediate pings on the Roshan pit. Miracle, he knows what's going on. He's gonna throw out a torrent, scout this one out. Roche is still alive and Liquid may get here in time to contest this one. OG trying to finish it off. They should just barely be able to get it. The last hit gonna go to Thompson. 
As does the Aegis. Nice play from the Pugna on the north side here. Gonna try and focus down Miracle, who does not have the ghost ship. Seb gets caught by a Carapace as well as a Rupture. He's kind of stuck in place. He can't really do a whole lot. He needs to send back, but the saves just aren't there with Tusk Snowball on cooldown. And now they're gonna lose one more, it looks like. No tail dead as well. And the entire Liquid side may not have been able to stop Roche from going down, but they get themselves a couple extra kills and will probably be pretty happy with where things stand. There's a little bit of a misread again, right? Anna goes to the bot lane, he barely misses uh, spotting them bre their smoke breaking. Um, so his opponents know he's there, yeah. he ends up hitting the creep wave to kill it, trying to act uh, normal, but instantly gets ganked by Liquid, and um, ultimately it was a bit of a stretch for them to even get the Aegis in, in, in the meantime, so... It's one of those moments where the, the team call is Anna, show mid so that we can sneak this Roche at. By showing mid, uh, show, show bottom. By showing bottom, they're more likely to secure Roche. But it's very much like a show bottom, but blink away when they gank you. If they gank yeah. you, don't die. Um, use your blink, use your shadow blade. He just, you know, sometimes they, they outplay you, they cancel those blinks, get that X. If they get that X, you're kind of in trouble. But OG still have this Aegis in hand, so they could look to make something happen. We've seen Topson very aggressive on his morph, not looking to find that Lincoln Z blade. He just wants to fight using his ultimate. Oh, Seb gonna be in trouble here. He didn't get his all of his spells off, just some of them, but Matumba's gonna pay big time. Yep. Topson though. Can he hold his ground against mind control? Sure as hell looks like that is not gonna be a problem for him. Just a little hard to, to do the full combo before the orchid comes out and no Bro. tail maybe? And dodging every projectile as Clinks does. Gets low-ish, but getting a kill right underneath OG's base and just walking away, that's gonna feel good for him. It's one of those ones you, you can't really slow down, unless you have a hard stun. If uh, Jerex is in the area, sure, you can you can defend your core, but it's hard. At least until he gets a blink dagger or something like that. His mobility is great, but it's not. He can't be everywhere at the same time. They're pinging, they know GH is here. Vendetta on cooldown. Gets a carapace out, but there's a Yule Scepter and Jerax, bro. He likes taking these kills. Yeah. <laughs> he does every time. Well, um, to the fantasy players out there with Jerax and their team, you know, yeah, be a bit happy. Trying to help you out. Uh, how's he doing right now? He's uh, sitting at a 11, number two on the board. Very good. Okay. Matama Man to support Nature's Prophet. Those currently wards, sitting man. one. I, people with those Matu cards with Obs Wards placed, you think, oh, it's a good, good, you've got like that gold with Obs on there. You're, you're really happy right now. Topson gonna take some damage as the as the morph or as the, the bloodseeker. It's like, is he really taking damage if he gets to just morph out of there? And yeah, he's full health, so yep. and it gives you this pseudo extra life if you can take damage in your alternate form and then just morph back. But silence, of course, the one thing you have to worry about. But he's going Mantis style as his first major item, which I like a lot against the the blood right. Yeah, definitely kind of interesting. Uh, did you see what he did there? He, he did the uh, hero chat lines of Bloodseeker, and then in response, uh, Mind Control gave him the same ones back. It's pretty good. Oh, nice. I didn't know you could do that on Morphling. I had Learned no idea here. as well. So, uh, trying to take the tier 1 tower on the top lane, definitely a worthy place to spend some time. Nature's oh, probably getting picked off by Ana. That's something that I kind of expected to see a little more. Yeah. Um, very easy to kill that hero, especially when he goes phase boots, Orchid, his raw HP is very low, so if he ever finds him slow, or low, it should be, or and solo, it's easy. He gets the kill and immediately going a bit greedy for a bounty rune. We'll get punished. Yeah. I feel like you can even see it there, like Thompson, he, he tips Anna after getting the solo pick off, say, basically saying like, good job, dude. Like they're, I think they recognize, you know, like Anna, he's not having the best day so far. This is a guy who's been known to have amazing performances and carry OG in the past, but so far what we've seen today has not been his, his peak. I would say he's doing better in this game as a whole, and he's got a lot of items, uh, I think is, is pretty yes. clear. I mean, he's, he's peaking net worth here with a phase boots, or sorry, with a blink dagger and a shadow blade. Um, so as long as he keeps buying uh, more carry items, and, and in the meantime, Jerex is also just hitting creeps constantly. So it's almost got his blink dagger finish. He does have his blink dagger finish, so it feels like the heroes that need them have the items that they're, they're going to want to take good team yep. fights. And it feels like on Liquid side, they're still kind of catching up here. Miracle just finishing Blink Dagger, queuing up a Daedalus now, but he's got a long way to go. I think he's got a Crystallis on the sh on the Courier at least, but I mean, it's going to be a while until he does a lot of damage. Yeah, absolutely. What was a recent BKB on Kuro? We'll see if he finds openings to play around this. Often a timing for carries that suddenly changes the game. If you can start taking Roshan, taking Towers, but... But despite it seemed content to just keep on playing in their jungle and playing more of a farming game. Oh, great X there by Miracle to pull himself back. But the Yules on Jerex, is it going to be enough? Probably not. Got to last for a whole eight seconds or something like that. So, although the X did get canceled. I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? I li we literally experienced this bug 
three days ago, testing, uh, making a clip. If you X somebody, and then he Xs himself, when the first X goes through, the second X actually doesn't pull them back, I believe. Okay. So that's why he didn't go back there. But if Thompson catches him there, for example, I, I don't think you can counter X with X all the time. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can do it with, like, if you get glimpse, you can X yourself to send yourself back, but if it's two Xs, the mechanics actually don't function. So we'll see if you figure that out. Very lucky that I happened to <laughs> encounter that scenario trying to make a video yeah, so three days ago. Yeah, so Kunk X's himself to run into like cleave down a wave and the the Morphling steals the form to try and X him back. It actually may not work. It depends on who goes first. If you X him and then instantly X again, like offensively while he's about to defensively X himself, yeah. then I think the defensive one would not trigger correctly. Okay. Another find on Anna here. Yeah. Gonna pick up the Prophet. That is just the by far the hardest thing, trying to catch up like this. Yes, and this is definitely a fun hero to be hunting down if you're a tiny. Gonna be fairly vulnerable to these rotations, and as the as the prophet, you often don't want to be with your team in these scenarios. Jarek's looking for a miracle here. He could get oh a. This, my that's God. a great shot, but he needs backup. Where is the rest of his team? It's Anna on the high ground, blinks on and over. Buyback immediately from Matu. Great ghost ship. Gonna buy some time here from the high ground, though. Here comes the rest of Liquid. Impale gonna follow up the Yule Scepter, and it's gonna be Miracle in some trouble on the Kunker. Topson wants him, he's stolen the Nyx Assassin form. Can he land some of these spells? Goes back to the Morphling. Topson, Manta styles himself away, back to the Nyx. Once again, has an Impale in a couple of seconds, but he gets stunned first himself. Carapace is in, in some nice fashion here. He's gonna stun the GH, and he Carapaces it. They just back and forth, stun on stun. Topson gets brought down in the end, and OG get team wiped. And on the high ground is Mind Control. I mean, it was oh, such boy. a great catch, but he got his boat off. He's got like 2,500 HP and a halberd. It took so much to try to kill him. And then just all of a sudden, Bloodseeker shows up, gets a blood right on everybody. Now the game just got thrown on its head against OG. Yeah. The halberd pickup, it's something I feel like I've seen Miracle do a lot just because all the stats you get from it, it's so amazing. Damage, strength, evasion. Look at this OG. skill. Yeah, they're not done yet. The blood raged up more playing Thompson. Trying to hold the high ground here. They've already lost the melee rack, so Thompson has to be very, very careful. He just bought back. If he dies here, he's in so much trouble. He gets stunned immediately. He tried to morph back and then wave form out, but Nyx Assassin was ready for it. The dieback will probably lead to more damage being dealt. They don't go for the mid racks here with the Pugna. They deter that, but they're going to go for the kills. The stun into Blood Right. Seb. Oh my god, that damage with the mana burn here. Anna's trying to save the day. He's killed up absolutely nobody yet. They're so low though, he can't kill anybody. Everybody has like no HP left. They're outplaying them so hard. Oh, and Chen Wei's his ultimate as well, just respawning oh. now. Man, every fight has just been... They're going mid, I'd so say, why, why not? There's three dead. Morphling just fought back and died once more. What's stopping you? He's got picked up more targets allies, but he's not alive for 50 more seconds. So no double nether ward, no double avalanche toss. Just the mid racks is just falling. And it kind of looks like Liquid's just going to close the game out. It looked close. It's one what? lost fight into, I mean, the fact you have creeps already in the high ground, and that's why, like, the strengths of heroes like Kunkka and Nature's Prophet is that they shovel lanes, lanes out constantly. You win a fight, suddenly, you know, you're at the enemy base. They're even trolling here. x back his allies. <laughs> Try to keep them around longer, but... Yep. It's, uh, it's looking really bad for OGLs. I think one of the things they're really lacking is single target burst damage. Like, Pugna's great there, but there's a lot of things that are interrupting him. Uh, Blood Rite has felt more impactful, for example. Maybe they can catch this Nature's Prophet here. That would be a nice snag for them. Definitely have some time. Oh, this could cost them. Okay. It has a BKB, but it's back at base. Sigil for vision and yep. uh, easy snag. They're, still, they're getting some kills, but they're having trouble bursting down heroes like Hunka from full HP. They're having trouble dealing with the Bloodseeker now that he's got BKB. They just don't have enough single target damage. Maybe it's partially Morphling's build, the Dragonlance Manta, but... I see why he built it. There's a lot of silence and things, and he needs to get rid of Spirit Vessel. But maybe burst heavy would have been better. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. GH runs into Anna, but he's just trying to help secure Roche for his team. As a gem, he's be careful as Jarek gets in the Roche after a little bit too late. The ghost ship with the rupture, both landing on top of Anna's stony head. As the. the Mega kill! Another round.